Rahman Rahim. Assalamu alaikum, dear viewers, and welcome to another episode of Her Thoughts, a brand new show on Imam Hussein TV, where we discuss a range of topics and derive some lessons which we can implement into our own life. Now, today we are discussing the etiquettes of Majalis and Ziyara. We have multiple narrations which state that whoever weeps for the Ahl Bayt and um, whoever cries for the oppression that was inflicted upon the Ahl Bayt, they will receive, the, on the day of Qiyamah, they will be receive the status alongside them. So if we want to re reap the rewards and um, the status of being alongside the Ahl Bayt, we must also have the etiquette of the Ahl Bayt السلام, when we attend Majalis and Ziyara. Now, um, before we go into the topic of the etiquette of Ziyara um, and Majalis, now, with the coronavirus pandemic, which has put a restriction um, on on social um, on social gatherings, we've seen that due to this, that a lot of mosques and Islamic centres have closed their doors for the month of Muharram and have. Um, and have taken all the majalis for online programming. So this is a perfect time while we have this pause in majalis, inshallah. Um, it seems like the restrictions have been lifted, inshallah. Soon we return back to normality and the majalis um, re uh, resumes and um, we are able to go to Ziyara. But during this pause that we have, it's very important that we begin to reflect upon how we behave in Majalis, what we do during Majalis, during Ziyara, and if we have the etiquettes, um, which the etiquettes of the Ahl Bayt when we attend Majalis and Ziyara. This is a very interesting topic, a topic which um, applies to all of us. So inshallah, we'll be discussing all that good stuff during the program today. So as usual, that's enough of me talking. As usual, we will go to our, my co-presenters in the studio today. Assalamu alaikum. Um, and inshallah, we will begin the episode. Um, so first of all, what's, you know, what etiquettes should we display while we are, um, while we attend um, Majalis? Respect is, I think, mm. the first thing that comes to my mind. Um, we need to be aware of whose presence we are in, mm. who we are commemorating, and what we're commemorating. Um, now, when we're looking at what, we can easily answer that, that, you know, Karbala, um, it's not just about our mannerism, it's equally the children we raise, it's the families we go along with. You know, we are all going as a union to commemorate in front mm. of, say, the Father's narrations that say that the Holy Personalities attend these Majalis, angels are, you know, arrive and they bless, they pray for the, um, the people that attend. Um, so we need to be cognizant of what is actually happening. We, we, there's lots that's happening in front of us and there's lots that we don't mm -hmm. equally see in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's infinite realm. So equally, so if we actually were aware of what, you know, what we perhaps cannot see, would we really behave in some of the disrespectful ways that mm -hmm. we could perhaps see that sometimes we observe of other people? Again, we're not responsible for other people's behavior, we're responsible for our own behavior. So if we keep ourselves in check and say, okay, am I being respectful? If I, God forbid, anybody that I know has had, um, you know, um, uh, a death, one death in their family, I wouldn't be going there in certain attire. I would be mm. respectful. I would look at what I'm wearing. I would look at how my conduct is, mm. how I speak, mm. how, how I walk into the room, how I sit with them and pray, pray my condolences. This is Ahl Bayt we're speaking about, who are dearer than our lives. Mm. So do we have the right to go and be flippant about where we are and think, oh, this is just another social gathering? We really need to be aware of our own actions. Um, mm. And I'll leave it up to the sisters. I don't want to take think, you know, um, what you said about you know the, the holy personalities attending Majalis, we know that you know say the say the Fatima comes. We know that Imam Zain al Abidin. There's riyat, there's revelations that say that you know Imam Zain al Abidin. He comes and he sits at the shoes um, um, when he attends the Majlis of Imam Hussein. And we also know that there's revelations that say that when a Majlis of Imam Hussein is taking place, whether it's in a center, Islamic center, or in your home, your house is lit up from the heavens, and mm. there's so much nur that the angels from the sky ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what is happening in this house? Why is this house lit up with so much nur? And they ask, they seek permission from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for them to attend that majalis. So we know that we have the, the holy angels that come, we have the holy personalities that come. How can we then sit there, um, you know, like you said, in some, some of the attire that people may wear, or even if it may, even if we may come into majalis in all black, you know, we're wearing respectable clothes, but if our mannerism is not respectful, 
how are we then going to connect with the Ahlul Bayt? How are we going to connect with the speaker? How are we going to feel the love um, for Imam Hussein? How are we going to feel the sorrow for what Imam Hussein went through, for what Lady Zainab went through? And you know, it just it makes me remember that when I was a young girl, and I would go to majalis with my mum, and often, you know, the majlis is in a language that you don't understand. Mm -hmm. But my mum would always say to me, it doesn't matter if you don't understand it. When you come to a majlis, there are certain etiquettes and there are certain respects that you have to uphold. Mm -hmm. um, so I would have to sit there quietly. Um, I would have to, you know, during um, the Masaib and when we're crying for Imam Hussein, she would say to me, if you don't understand it, even if you don't feel it, sit there with your head lowered. Try and maybe imagine how Bibi Rukeya felt, you know, having her earrings snatched off her, or how she may have felt in the prisons of Sham. And that's now something, those are the lessons which I've taken from my mum and trying to instill that in my daughter and my son today. We are blessed that we okay, now we know that the centres are restricted because of the coronavirus, but generally as a community, we are blessed that we have uh, programmes specially dedicated to our young Especially ones. Especially in London, we yes, are so fortunate. Yes, we are blessed. And, mm. and alhamdulillah, I'm also blessed to be a teacher of um, the, you know, the, the, the centres that, that I attend, teaching the children in, in Muharram, in Ramadan. So I see how much those children, they pick up, they are mm. like sponges. And if yeah. you tell your child that, look, it is the day of Ashura, and although you're going to teach them in a in a in a manner that they understand, they all understand that you know, come Shami Gariba, we have to be we have to be quiet. Imam Hussein has passed away. The the women and children are now alone. And if you instill those little little values in children from a young age, like I tell my daughter, she says to me, "But mummy, I I can't um, bring tears. I I don't know how to cry." And I say, it's okay, you don't have to cry, but you can sit there and try and imagine. And something that stands out for me is my son, who now is, he's turning eight, but this is a couple of years ago, and I had gone for Arba'in, and he was with my parents. And my mum had taken him to an Islamic center, and um, they were watching a play on Sayyid the Ruqayya. And he turns around and he says, Nani, um, my eyes are watering. I feel like I, I, my eyes are, I feel like I'm shedding a tear, my eyes are watering. Now for his young tender age of the age of five to be concentrating on the play that he saw and actually for it to even you know pull a nerve string in his heart and say, I'm feeling that a little bit of the pain what say the Rokeya went through, it just shows that actually we can teach our children. We don't need to be old and we don't need to be in our thirties and forties to cry for Imam. We can be at the young tender age of five and still have that love for Imam Hussein. So it's so important to instill that from such a young age. And you know, and just going back to what you were saying, Zahra, the etiquettes of, of how you sit in a majalis is so, so important from now to teach your child in that, especially in the, the day and age that we are living in, where we know that we have the West always there to influence our mm. children. Social media is always there, and peer pressure is always there. You yeah. may see your friend sitting in a different way, or you may see your friend's mother who doesn't say, you know, you, you have to sit in like this, and you have to wear black, or, you know. So it, it, it does bring peer pressure to our children, but essentially we know that we're teaching them the right thing. Definitely, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, just to add to that, um, I feel like there's respect of two kinds. There's respect to kind of the kind of respect that we show when we don't know someone too well and mm. you're just going to be polite and in certain languages there'll be like a different way to say you to an old person mm. compared to like your friend um and then there's a respect where you truly understand and you know that person's status and you know how much higher than you they are and mm. that respect then comes naturally and i think there's no um there's no one who is beyond respecting the Ahlul Bayt. You know, we have narrations that say, if you are sat in a majlis of Imam Hussain alayhi salam and you can't cry, then even just having a sad face or just looking mm. grievous has reward in it. Yes. And the other thing um, to mention is um, the Ahlul Bayt have a greater right upon us than anyone. And it goes back to what Zahra was saying before, that if this was a family member who had passed away or um, you know, a, a close friend who had passed away, 
we need to remember whatever we would do for that family member or that friend is minuscule compared to what we should mm. be doing for the Ahlul Bayt. So our respect level should be much, much higher. Mm. Definitely, that's and beautiful. I, and I was going to say also that when you're in a majal, like the very basic is respect, isn't mm. it? That, that we should be going in with that mannerism and etiquette. But I think once you're there, um, now when you were saying about the distractions in life, um, so I always look at Ziara and, I w and your daily prayers are actually, we're, this is a part of us, it's taking yourself away from dunya and going into the realm of Allah which he's created and Ahl Bayt's you know, mission of guiding us um, and our, our Imam um, alayhi salam, who is watching over us, mm -hmm. it's our opportunity at that point to switch away from this world that we are you know, we have to go through these part, this journey of life to get our akhirah. Um, and it's, a, it's opportunities like majalis to connect in the days of mm -hmm. Maharam because if we miss these boats of yeah. salvation, yes. whether that's Ramadan, whether that's, you know, the Layl of the Qadr nights, whether that's um, Hajj, whether that's Ziara, whether that's, uh, um, you know, Maharam and Arbayin, if we don't connect at that point, mm -hmm. our hearts are not open to, and the commemoration is actually opening us up. So when your son mm -hmm. has that tear in his eye, that's his heart opening up and the light of Allah mm -hmm. going into his heart. And I personally, um, I know the month of Muharram, the, the month that we're in is a very heavy month for mm -hmm. us all. But actually I look forward to this month because I know it's a month of self-purification. I know it's a month where I can and we should cry for Imam Hussein daily, but I know that in this month we're going to question ourselves. Have we done enough? Have we strived enough for the, in, the way, in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Have we done enough to, for the mission of Imam Hussein? And I know that in this month I'm openly going to open my heart and cry. And this is the month where we, you know, we attend majalis and, you know, Muharram, Safar, you know, we go for Arbeen and this, this, this month of Muharram has been so different because, you know, our centres are closed and we're doing, like you said, Zahra, we have online lectures um, and it is a month of reflection, but more so now because we have that added time at home to reflect. And we also know that coming to a community centre builds us together as a whole. Going for Ashura, going to Karbala on Ashura strengthens your faith. Now we know that this in itself is a test. Being at home, in your house, listening to Majalis at home is a test in itself. How can we still connect to Imam Hussein? How can we still pray for Imam? How can we still um, cry for Imam Hussein? And yes, we're not in the Majalis in the centers, but there is still etiquettes to be kept at home when you are listening to your majalis online. Mm. You know, okay, we don't have people looking at us, but within yourself, how you feel and how you respect Imam and how you cry, cry for Imam, even at home, is an etiquette in itself. Mm. You know? Definitely. It's about reviving the heart, isn't yeah. it? And it's ensuring yeah. that your heart is aligned to the truth that Ahl Bayt are guiding us towards. And if we don't, like I said, if we miss that boat, mm. we are going to struggle. It's not the end of it. I mean, again, the, how we prepare is a very basic level of how we, because we're preparing our soul to be facing with, you yes. know, with, with the reality of ourselves actually in those mosques. And, um, mm. but I think even when you're saying about reviving of the heart, so at the moment, you know, Karbala is closed for visitation. Arabayin likely to be closed. Um, and so in this period, we can't go. And I remember speaking to um, one of my sheikhs and he, I was saying that, you know, we, I miss Karbala so mm. much. Um, and, and he said, well, what we always need to remember is how much of Karbala have we taken in our heart and to come back here yeah. yes. and live that in our lives here. And, and that's the bottom line, that although we are not in those holy shrines mm. to help us with our faith, that to connect with them. Because then actually time and space doesn't mean yeah. anything in the yeah, path of Allah. It's, mm. it's all an object of this world. Um, <clears> and it's important that we teach out not only ourselves but our children that you Definitely. know those, these personalities are real and they're alive and connect. Mm. Definitely, yeah. yeah. I mean, we talked a lot about what we should do, you know, sitting down and, and, and appreciating and having the, the grief within us and you know, sitting properly, but I want, I want to talk about what we really shouldn't do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for example, you know, should people really be socializing when, when a majus is going on? And that's a problem that a lot of mosques mm -hmm. have, that um, there is a lot of socializing that goes on when the speaker is speaking. And, and sometimes not, that doesn't only 
affect you, that affects the yeah. people that are sitting around yes. you from reaping the benefits and actually concentration. And um, I, I will begin by saying what I feel like mm. our mosques should improve upon and um, and then I can pass it on to, to the rest of you. I personally feel that the shortcomings in our own mosque is that we are not catering towards the disabled and mm. a disability is something which is so close to my heart. Many people know my brother's disabled, I've got a disabled niece. Um, so disability is so close to me and I see that public public buildings which is all around all have accessibility yes. to wheelchairs it will mm -hmm. have yeah. programs which are catered towards the people that are um you know intellectually delayed or, or mm -hmm. you know so but when it comes to us we're not really catering no. just recently we've done for kids but are we really catering yeah. towards the disabled mm -hmm. and i think you know in, in in islamic history we see beautifully how even there was a there was a blind man um and, 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 and the Prophet, what he done is that he tied a rope to his hand and to the mosque. So he didn't want to burden people by taking him to the mosque, but he made it so accessible for mm -hmm. him to go mm -hmm. to the mosque. And it's something that I feel like we should improve upon in our own mosques. Now, there's a lot of other areas that people say, oh, well, by the way, there's people that shout at kids when they run around, mm -hmm. but there are disabilities which you cannot see. And I yeah. remember precisely two years ago, and I will say this, uh, I've said this live on TV before, two years ago, a sister emailed me and she said, I don't go to Majalis mm. because I have a child with autism. Mm. And I said, why don't you go to Majalis? Go to Majalis. And she said, yeah, but people see him running around and they think he's misbehaving and he always gets shouted at because they cannot see his disability. So she stays at home for all Majalis. Yes. I mean, now we're all at home. But there are certain things that I feel like there is a certain etiquette to go around. Mm. If you see a child running ab around, have you ever thought that child there may have a, a disability that you cannot see so there's a way of speaking to a child in a way that you don't it do goes, that goes back to the the morality and, and etiquettes we have as human beings in ourselves mm. so if you have a child who you know you, you're admonishing a child in the center commemorating imam hussein you know the the holy prophet and in our break we was talking about um mm. the etiquettes of the holy prophet peace be upon him had he not had his mercy would mm. we have had islam mm. he mm. was such a beautiful human being and he taught through love mm. and so if we don't emulate that and we are speaking to children in a harsh tone then what is that saying about mm. our etiquette mm. and our religion? But do you know um, how common that is? You know, it's so, it's, um, it's, it's, it's it's so common um, that it's actually sometimes I have sat there in Majalis and wanted to say something back to the person who is, you know, embarrassing the mother mm. who has, you know, we know that when we come to Majalis, mm. Bibi Fatima is invited. Each and every person who is there is there for a reason and every single person who comes there with their own hajat and their own duas. And we know that how many duas are accepted just from the majlis of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Now if you are going to come there and embarrass a mother who already, she knows that she's having difficulty looking after her child, but she's taken the courage to come there. And it's not easy bringing children no. to majalis, yeah. especially at night when it's raining and it's cold and you've got your it's car seats bedtime. and it's yeah. their bedtime and mm. they're crying. And to bring the child to the majalis simply because you have that love of Imam Hussein, or you have that hajat that you so desperately need the intercession of the beloved holy infallible to you know to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for somebody to come and crush your hopes just by saying your child is misbehaving mm. or your child take your child out you know often you'll say okay sit in the corner and you're sitting in the corner where you can't see the speaker speaking on the screen you can't hear mm. um, it's, it's almost embarrassing you know you're embarrassing that individual and there's been so many times where I felt like saying you can't treat people like this because everybody comes to Amajis for a reason but you know that they may be an elder so out of respect you can't say something. I think it's oh. always best to keep your own mannerism, mm. isn't yes, it? But if, yes. if I saw that happen in front of me, I think, as you were saying, I was thinking, well, what would I do? And I think I would go up to that child and give him the opposite and give him the love mm. so that he didn't feel that he had done anything. Because you can't mm. tell somebody else off. You know, you don't know. Maybe they're not feeling well. There could be yeah. a million, 70 excuses all around, really. But the thing that you can do is share love and say, OK, well, you know, this child may have got upset. And actually, somebody who's perhaps got autism mm. or something mm. that we may mm. not see, even their dua against you could go <laughs> directly so you don't well, even want yeah, that yeah. Um, but I would then go and show shower that child with love perhaps if I, I usually carry sweets around for myself so <laughs> take one of those out and share them but I think it's always best to do what you can do because we can't yeah. teach everybody and we can't yeah and it is it's it's so sad to see that um, and I it's very sensitive as well yeah. where, where what is the fine line with 
um, telling the individual that mm, you, maybe you shouldn't speak like that, but yeah. also upsetting them. They're your elders. They're also there in majlis to listen. So maybe you know they're they're getting disturbed, so they're not happy about it. But yeah, it is a sensitive issue. And Alhamdulillah, now many, many centers are now catering for the youth of our community. Mm. And it's so wonderful to see because this is how they're learning. Mm. Um, and this is, and essentially they are the, the future generation. Yeah. They are the ones who are going to recite Majalis in 20, 30 years time. So yeah. if they don't learn now, yeah. I mean, what are they going to do in 20 years' time? Definitely. Yeah. I think, Zahra, what you were saying about, you know, it's a shame that we are so behind in terms of catering for people that are less able mm -hmm. um, and have special needs. But, you know, we always have hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, you know, you've mentioned it, um, maybe there's someone who listen that maybe these things will start to change mm -hmm. and, yeah. and we adopt more because we are quite slow yeah. to adopt what happens. I know some centres that have started... Um, translating lectures into yes. sign language yeah. Yeah. that's a start mm. again exactly and, I and think that is a great that's a great um, um improvement as well because yeah. we are slowly seeing yeah. improvement yeah. but but like I said, when someone th feels like they cannot attend their majlis because of their disability, that's something which we must change or because of yeah. how people re will react to a disability, that's something that we must change. But it's fun it's interesting, you were saying about, you know, this year is such a strange year and, and you know, the lectures going online. I remember so many reverts would, who are perhaps in isolated areas around the UK and around the world, um, where they would say, oh, there's not much, you know, much lecture available mm -hmm. online because we're, you know, we're isolated, we can't attend centres or mothers mm. can't come out yeah. you know mm. long mm. further drives um, and subhanallah we're all in that position yeah. now we're you know it's more appreciative online. aren't and we mm. yeah and I think you know perhaps it's a way of us even learning that what others feel when we say well you know it's not you know we don't think about what what others go through perhaps because they're in a minority missing out exactly. yeah. So, yeah. so that brings me on to say are, are we opening our mosques up to people that are outside the mosque because I feel like a lot mm. of times which is sad, but each mosque is like, we are the Iranians, we are the Iraqis, Absolutely. we are the Khoja. And, and then mm. sometimes when, and, and that's something, that's not, I'm, I'm not saying that. I mean, when converts come into come I've into had it. Mosque, I've oh, had really? it going into a mosque and someone yeah. saying in their language, da, 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 Pakistani, da, 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 oh, oh, not okay. wanting me. And I was thinking, oh, well, yeah. that's interesting. But, um, but yeah, it does happen. It does happen. It's very yeah. sad, and, but it's very common. It is, yeah. I think we are becoming more aware of it. And slowly the trends are changing. Yeah. Um, especially as the, the the smaller youth are growing up, and you know, majalis is uh, the, the setup and the style of majalis are changing. I remember uh, before when I was young, we were very set in our ways, where majalis would only be in a certain language, mm -hmm. um, and whether the youth understood it or not, it doesn't matter. This is the language we're going to have it. But now, slowly, slowly, we are seeing that majalis are being held more and more in English to cater for the youth so that they, they understand as well. So I think there is that we are slowly narrowing the gap um, of kind of, you know, you're not Khoja or, or, or you're not Pakistani, or you're not Iranian or you're not Iraqi. There is still, you know, room for improvement, but yeah. I think people are becoming more aware and people are becoming more accepting of different cultures. Um, and also I'm finding that, of course, I mean, this year is very different for all of us, but I'm finding that especially m my friends and the people that I know are not just sticking to the Khoja center that they want to go to, to listen to the Majalis. They're every day picking a center, depending on the reciter, who's reciting, and they are going to the other Islamic centers, you know, to, to listen to the speakers mm. there. And I'm actually finding that's happening more and more. And I think people are becoming more in tune that there are other people from other cultures attending their centers as well. Yeah, I, see, I think that's the case for the English mm. lectures, yeah. but the, the Arabic or the mm. Kurdu or the... Yeah, I think still the, cent much. the traditional centers perhaps still have that issue. Yeah, yeah. but. Individual organisations, I've noticed, especially in the last decade, mm. um, are a lot more diverse. Even mm. the people organising it, there's much more diverse and young. Group. It's interesting, isn't it? Because in our professional lives, we meet so we, we meet everybody, but you know, around type. Yeah. I mean, you'd be lucky if you see a Shia, you know, mm. at work, and um, and and we're we're accustomed to that. We're accommodating yeah. to that. But when it comes to our religious, religion. and where we need to be merging as one, mm. because we're already a minority in a minority, we are making even more barriers for people not yeah. to actually interrelate. And, it, and actually, it's not Islam, it's culture. culture exactly. it's, it, 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 there, nowhere in Islam does it say that you are Khoja, so you are better, you are Iraqi, so you are better. It's yeah. all culture and 
it's sad that sometimes it is so deep rooted that we yeah. don't see beyond it. Mm. Okay, we've got a few minutes left, but um, we haven't touched actually about Ziara even <laughs> the going. We haven't even no, touched about Ziara. So is there any etiquette to Ziara that you know? No, but yeah. So there are listen. because I remember. I was going to quickly say I remember going to um, Umrah one recently, and um, and you know you go and you're preparing to meet the the greatest of creation and in, in Medina, um, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And um, I remember going with a companion and non-stop chatting about dunya. And mm. it was like, I want to go there shopping, and I want. To, and I was really, I was like, trying to keep my heart attuned, yes. but then not really rude. Isn't it? Yes, yes. we focus on but him. But you're saying that, and it kind of draws me back to you know the trips to Iraq. Um, oh, I, but I need to go and get this ring, and I need to get this jewelry, mm. and well, look at Mecca. And yeah, Mecca is like yeah. surrounded. And, and of course, we all want. I mean, look, we're we're all ladies. We all like jewelry. We all like rings. But I mean, like what you said, the etiquettes of Ziara are very similar to the etiquettes of Majalis. Mm. You know, how we act in the Majalis. In fact, in Ziara, we know that Imam Hussein is right there. His, his, his haram, Hazrat Abbas's haram. You know, we, we go to Medina, you've got Prophet Muhammad. You go to Sham, you've got Bibi Zainab, say the Ruqayya. So maybe we should be a little bit more um, kind of careful in Ziara than we are in Majalis, but I think that the, the base is the same. Yeah, it's, it's a cognizance of the heart, keep mm -hmm. your heart aligned and know where you are and be, be respectful because I think it's not respectful as in just on a superficial level, but really connect your heart, think about where you're going, who you're seeing, yeah. because personalities are beyond plus our... plus who's invited you? Exactly. They've so. invited you. The thing is, mm. is Majalis and Ziara should be a time where we should reap all the benefits and like you said it's it's it's, it's to really it's a time of reflection and yes. and if we are sitting there and going back to socializing and if we're sitting there just socializing about the worldly matters then we are not really connecting or reaping mm. the benefits if we go to Ziara and we think about for example I don't know how, how. That's why in Mecca, I mean, there's a period where you don't, you're not even allowed to put anything on your but face. This is the, I was, you were just saying talking, and I was just speaking, thinking about ahram. Yeah. I remember when you, whenever I've worn ahram, there are people that say, "I can't wait to get this off," and you think it's such a beautiful thing. You are just Allah. There's just no one minimal. around you that yeah. you're responsible. Yeah. Like you're just turning your heart to God, mm. and it's such a beautiful moment. And why do you want to rush to exactly, get out? But yeah. actually, all of these little things are mini ahrams. Yeah. Or I mean, also, you know, when we go for arba'in and we're walking for three days from Najaf to Karbala and we're all tired and we're hungry and we haven't showered but when you reach Imam Hussein in that state it's beautiful because you don't want to reach him all clean and perfumed and showered and you know in your best clothes you want to reach him saying I've strived and struggled just a little bit and that's you know, the beauty yeah. and that's the beauty of it we're coming to Imam looking the way we are looking because of the love that we have. We're not yeah. going to come to Imam for the first time on our visitation with, mm. you know, wearing lovely clothes and with lavish food in our stomachs. Mm. You want to go to Imam hungry. Definitely. So here, I wanted to get your opinion. I think humility, mm. humility is key. Um, and humility leads to respect for both, both these things. Yeah. Um, and we've been reiterating this throughout this episode to understand who it is we're honoring. Mm. Um, we, we can, so on a superficial level, yes, as kids we're taught, do this, do that, don't do this, don't do that. But mm. truly, if we really want to um, fulfill the rights of the imams, then we need to understand and know them properly. And that only comes from knowledge and understanding and reading about them and learning about them. Definitely, yeah. Um, any last points before we end off? No, I think, I think everything's been said, but just to reiterate, I think this is a, a time where we all can reflect and think more so now because we are in this unusual setting mm -hmm. um, and it's just a time for us to kind of think about how we can change as well. Definitely, yeah. Beautiful. Um, thank you all for, for the discussion and thank you all for joining in today. Um, etiquettes of Majalis and Ziyara. We all know that we must carry the traits and characteristics of the Ahl Bayt, especially if we're conducting Majalis or events in their name and in their honour. We must be individuals which carry the traits and characteristics that the Ahl Bayt taught us about and the Ahl Bayt carried themselves. We are the representatives when we um, hold Majalis in their name. The way we speak to others, the way we behave to others, the way we tell others, the way we behave ourselves, the way we socialize when we come into the mosque, the way we carry ourselves, the way we dress, everything must be um, giving, given consideration. Also about the rights of others. Are we 
opening our mosques and making it exclusive to everyone um, um, or are we just excluding it and making it for our own group, our own nation, our own um, nationality and the other thing is are we opening it up and making it accessible for all people including people of disability these are all the points that we touched upon in today's episode inshallah join us for another episode of her thoughts where we discuss another topic and um, and touch upon the lessons that we can implement into our own lives I thank you all for joining in today and please do join us um, for another episode soon wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh